We've just looked at planets and they're for the most part round and depending on how big they are relative to their gravity, they can get mountains. But there's another big common geological feature on a lot of these things and that is not stuff that is up but down, craters. Yeah, so here we're looking at a flyover of the moon and what's the most common thing you see on the moon? I mean, if, if you ask anyone what does the moon look like, they will say craters. That's right. So if you look at the moon, you see lots of these round dips. Lots and lots of There's, these I mean, because even the big ones, and they're small and small and small. I mean, I don't think I could count them all. There's actually craters and craters. Yes, and craters and craters and craters. <laughs> and so on the moon, these round dips, which we call craters, uh, so a big one and some small ones inside it and smaller ones. I mean, I mean, it, it, I mean, the more you look, you just see the tiniest amounts of them in addition to these gigantic ones. That's right. So there are huge numbers of craters on the moon, and there are also craters on almost everything else. So here's Mercury, and what do you see? It, I thought it was the moon, to be honest. It looks like the moon. It's cratered. That's right. How about this? This is Mars. Uh, that is a giant crater, and there's what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I don't know, a couple dozen craters just right here. This is an interesting crater because there's actually got sand dunes inside, yep. which you don't see on the moon, but it's still a crater, and there are still lots more craters around. If you go further out, this is 450 Eros, an asteroid, it's got craters on it. It has craters and a mountain. That's right. And this is Ganymede, and it's got craters, plus some funny lines we'll come back to later. Yep. Uh, and this is Pluto, and guess what you see? So even on the edge of the solar system, Pluto, it has craters. That's right. So basically everything which has a solid surface seems to have craters. But what has created these craters? Well, that was the big dilemma. I mean, um, what causes craters? So we know they're spherical, well, not round holes, yep. um, dips in the middle. So uh, if you don't know what the hell is going on, you often try and find analogues on Earth to That's compare right. it to. So uh, on Earth, we certainly have rounded holes, and the most common of these are called volcanic calderas. Yep. So here is one. You see there's a big volcano and a big circular hole in the middle with a bit of a lake in the bottom of it. And here's another one with a bigger lake in it. And these are very common, and they are created in volcanoes. You get a big chamber of magma, lava underneath. Yep. So you get a volcano with eruptions of dust that build something up. And then after the lava has all flowed out or flown away, um, that leaves a hole at the bottom, and a lot of the rock in the centre collapses, producing a hole, circular hole. So essentially this is almost like a, a, a cave-in of the surface. That's right. So you've, you've pushed the surface up by having all this lava underneath it, plus you've had a volcano, and then the lava goes away, and there's a, there used to be a big chamber underneath it goes away, and it collapses and often leaves a roughly circular hole in the ground. And there's, as you said, there's quite a few of these on Earth. There are a huge number. But uh, so most circular holes in the ground on Earth are going to be calderas. And naturally, people thought maybe that was also the case on the moon and everywhere else. Okay. But there are a few circular holes in the ground, craters on Earth, which are not caused by yep. the same lava. The most famous of which is the Beringer Meteor Crater in northern Arizona, which we've both visited on various occasions. And this looks a lot from above, a lot like one of those craters on the moon, doesn't it? It does. It is. It's, it's, it's round. Um, it's quite large. Um, to be honest, if you change this to a grey scale and remove the visitor centre, you probably would think it's the moon. That's right. Um, but people early on thought this was probably also caused by a volcano, because in fact this is just on the outskirts of the San Francisco mountains, which yep. are covered in volcanoes with numerous craters and the like. <laughs> uh, but when they investigated a bit more closely, it, it became clear that it was there wasn't. First of all, it, it, it dips deep into the ground rather than being raised up above it. All the volcanoes nearby are nice and high with a crater at the top, whereas this is a flat with a crater underneath it. Yep. And you also don't find lots of lava flowing to the surface. Yep. You actually find lumps of nickel iron in the middle from the meteorite, as it happens if you dig under the bottom. Yep. And uh, all the rocks around show signs of shock. The okay. rock grains have all um, been flattened out as if some incredibly intense blast wave passed through them. So there appears to be something that has happened on the surface down rather than underneath up. That's right. And we can simulate it. This is a NASA simulation where they actually tried firing a very fast projectile into a fake analog of an asteroid and see what happens. There's our bit of asteroid. We're going to fire something into it. Boom. As the thing 
crashes in, it has an enormous amount of energy because any asteroid that hits the Earth is going to be very fast, many kilometers per second, not kilometers per hour. Yeah. This is going a lot faster than a bullet. It's not just it digs a hole in something. Uh, that energy is going to cause an enormous explosion. It's this explosion that produces the crater in the end. And so that explosion kicks out all that material, all that dust, and creates that deformation. You would, so you would have a shock wave, as you saw with those rocks in uh, Arizona, that has gone through it. That's right. So how can you tell whether these things are actually a, a caused by a meteorite coming in from outside or a volcano and lava away on the Earth? On Earth, you can go and measure the rocks and so on. And on the moon, they've actually done the same. They've taken samples and they find, yep. indeed, it's not lava. Well, actually, all the moon is lava at some level. But, but there's yes. definitely signs of shocks and not of lava channels coming up from underneath. That's right. Um, so one test is, uh, this is what people about 100 years ago thought they could not be meteorites. OK. Because... Meteorites, some are going to go straight down to the surface, but some are going to come in at an angle. That's right. I mean, there's no reason they would come just from on top. We know they can come from anywhere. And if they come at an angle, people thought they would drill an elliptical hole. Oh, so, so it kind of, kind of like almost skipping in the dirt. So it would be longer and not circular. That's right. But as you saw in all those pictures, pretty much most of the meteorites are cir holes. The craters are circular. Yep. But it turns out that the way that a meteorite creates a hole is not by drilling it. Yep. It's because there's so much energy, it causes a huge explosion. When it hits, all its kinetic energy turns into uh, energy. And in fact, they discovered rapidly in World War I that there were lots of craters, uh, and the craters were all circular. It didn't matter what direct speed the artillery came in, what angle, because what was causing the crater was not the motion of the artillery shell, it was its energy, its explosion. So it's the release of energy that dictates the shape. Yeah, so it doesn't matter if it's coming in here, it still explodes and blows a circular hole. Right. So the circular is not really an argument one way or the other. Are they raised up? I mean, most volcanoes, you get yep. the flat surface originally, then it gets raised up to form a volcano, a little dip at the top. And so uh, that you see that on Earth. Yep. Um, whereas the craters, you see other places don't seem to be on that. That's right. Some of them are raised, some are lower. They've got a little bit of raising around them because of the debris that's been blown out. But, but nothing like you would see in pretty much any caldera here on Earth. Yes, there are a few which seem to be just going down. Presumably they were very wimpy or the lava just flowed out very smoothly. I think, for example, Mount Gambier in Australia mm. is like that. It's, it, has, it is fairly raised up around it. But if you were to look at the moon, there's no way you'd probably have that many of that style. Yep. And the other thing is containing yeah. shocked rocks. And of course, we can't tell that on anywhere other than the um, Earth and Moon, but both of those contain shocked rocks. Yep. So it seems that most of these things are actually caused, but the vast overwhelming majority away from the Earth are really caused by a meteorite impact.